Hello, thanks for tuning in to Fantasy TV. Today we will be building a mini ramp for skateboarding that's 24 feet long, 12 feet wide, and about three feet tall. The blueprint for this ramp is gotten by three different YouTube creators. You can see the links below, but we're sort of borrowing the best ideas from the three of them to see what we come up with. Uh, the primary inspiration is the Wicked Makers with Jamie and Jay. They actually have an instructional pamphlet that you can purchase. I think it's like five or 10 bucks, if even that, uh, that's super helpful. And then also there's a video from David's Jones site. We're gonna use some ideas from him. And last but not least, uh, Billy Rohan, a Vice channel, also below. If you're gonna build a mini ramp, by the way, a lot of the tools we used are really dangerous. So we hold no liability if you use these tools or try to build a mini ramp. By the way, you should have a release of liability for skateboarders who come to use your ramp just so you're not held liable in case somebody gets hurt. It's really good to have two people uh, to build the ramp and even three when you're putting the ply down and I'll show you why when we get to that stage. So uh, this is this is my, my helper here, John John. My name's Quinn. So without further ado, let's, let's build, build a, a mini ramp. ramp. Firstly, for the lumber, uh, we've actually pre-painted the lumber for a number of reasons. We live in an area that's got really adverse weather. It can be really hot and it can be really wet, but more so termites are a huge problem. So not only have we termite protected the lumber, but we've used a polyurethane coating, paint coating on top of that just to make sure we get some mileage off this, you know, hopefully a couple years or more. Uh, if we don't put termite protection on here, the termites will destroy it within a year. It is a lot of lumber. Like I said, the Wicked Makers site uh, actually specifies exactly what lumber you'll need to buy and the sizes you'll need to cut it. We actually did a lot of cutting to get this um, prefabricated. The total cost of the lumber was about 1,000 uh, US dollars, but that's because where I am right now, there's a really good exchange rate. I think stateside, it would probably be close to double that right now. This is being made in year 2023 during uh, massive inflation, especially for wood. So fortunately, we did get a deal on the lumber. For tools, you're gonna wanna get a strong drill because you'll be screwing in a lot of screws and you want to get one that has this uh, hammer uh, feature and also you're going to want to get um, some countersink uh, drill bits so that your screw heads will go beyond the surface of the wood and sink in a little bit so they're not sticking out and also you'll need a, a variety of, um, of drill bits and then uh, you're gonna need a ton of screws. I mean, this is this is basically like, we got like 2,500 inch and a half. We've got some two and a half inch, two inches. All told, we, we probably have about 4,000 screws. And our ramp is gonna be sort of embellished upon with, with the extended deck and like a fort. So we did have to buy a little more materials than otherwise. But we, we also had to get stainless because, again, we live in a, in a tropical environment. If we don't get stainless, these will rust very quickly and then they will actually start to break. Uh, this is another big facet of the, the mini ramp. These are um, half inch bolts uh, along with the nuts and uh, washers because we're going to be uh, bolting uh, four or actually five huge pieces of ramp together. Uh, you do need a lot of the sturdy bolts because the, the, the ramp is obviously gonna take a lot of abuse of being a skateboard ramp. 
And then we have some other miscellaneous screws and stuff like that. And uh, so this is where we're gonna build it. This play area was purpose built for this mini ramp. I mean, how awesome is that? I know it sounds crazy, but uh, once again, we live in an area that has a wet season that lasts for like three months with constant downpours. And we also have a hot season for like three months. It's literally like 100 degrees outside. So we needed to build a place that's flat, that's protected for year-round skateboarding. Uh, this roof is a special, uh, it's called La Bing. It's made out of, of palm fronds uh, because it has good uh, longevity. It's great waterproofing. So if you live someplace where this is available, you might want to check it out. And also we have lighting for nighttime skateboarding. So what you want to do is start with the basic frame of the first structure. There's four of these. This one is four feet wide. So there's two that are four feet wide and two that are eight feet wide. And the basic structure you can see has about five um, transverse posts on it. So then you're going to have these cross, these cross beams every eight inches. So what you want to do to make it easier is get measuring tape and line it up all the way to the top. And then every eight inches, you're just going to mark, you're going to mark the wood. So what you want to do is have two screws on both sides for each beam. We actually drilled a pilot hole first because our wood is so hard that it was it just makes it easier okay the first four foot section is completed it's pretty solid shake it a little bit pretty good yeah you see we pre-painted the wood a tile red even though you're not going to see it on the top you're going to see it through the back and it's gonna kinda look a little bit like a pirate ship once we get the black wow. the decking on. So we're working on our first eight foot section here. The Wicked Makers had this really great idea to put this brace in so that when you put the top platform on, it's a lot easier. It's just a matter of putting the two by fours. We already did it over here. And so once you have those beams, you can just put it every eight inches. You don't even have to hold it. And it makes the installation of the screws like 10 times faster. So these are the four main sections. Of course, we're gonna have eight feet of flat. It's not back to back, but we're just putting it like this for storage right now. Uh, but next is the flat space. We put the yellow over here because under here, there's gonna be a children's, like a fort. Uh, and it's gonna, the deck is gonna extend that way. So it'll be really cool for them to be inside and have like yellow highlights along the ceiling. So we have our flat sections now, and now we have to put the six pieces together. But we're also gonna have some additional extensions off the side. All right, looking good. We got the six pieces together. You notice we had to make a little adjustment over here because we've got these two gates coming out from the second 
uh, kickback area. Here in the Philippines, they call it a Kubo. But anyway, the corner of the platform is going to go out this far. And uh, also, we have this punching bag here. We don't want it swinging into the platform. So anyway, looking good. The next step, we're going to build our additional platform, which is going to double as a like a pirate fort for the kids. So now we're going to be winging it. So John John there is cutting the uh, back of this piece here. We're going to put the back on this platform so we can make a fort for the kids. See, we have a little door coming in. So here's a progress update. You see we enclosed the fort here. We put the back piece on and uh, we've got got windows here and over here we've installed our door uh, we put a latch on it so once the top is on we can put all our skate stuff back here and not have to worry about anybody stealing it so basically you're gonna come in here and it's gonna be a fort and I'm gonna put a soft ground and again, here's our window. Like so, go ahead and lock it for now. And our door. We have a locking door as well on the inside. And we have a pirate keyhole. So we know if any, uh, any of the British are coming, we can hide out in our pirate fort. <laughs> no! Hey, the British are here! Everybody hide! Ah. Everybody hide! <laughs> what? What? I started putting white windows. Windows, too. leftover slides from before so we put two together to make a to make a double decker slide okay ocean let her rip a little bumpy but it works you want to try it Aisha so right now we're working on retro fits because this wood is called marine and you see it has a lot of gaps and stuff so it's actually really pretty flimsy wood and the reason it's like that is this wood is actually made for boats and they they put fiberglass over it to make it stronger and it's really airy so it floats good but it was a crappy choice well, it wasn't that bad. One good thing about it is it's it has a natural, uh, not natural. They put layers of um, kind of like epoxy inside, so it's um, more waterproof. Um, but because of it's it's like having skin with no bones, the way the design is ramped. So what we're doing is retrofitting, squaring up the inside which is probably a good idea to do anyway on the larger sections if you're making this ramp. And I'll show you the other side where we really supported the transition too because that's where most of the pressure is coming. This place is going like a ghost town. To hold the transitions, mainly again because of this kind of wood. We just don't trust it over time on its own. And uh, another thing is we don't have an electric a band saw. And so John John here has been cutting the wood 
by hand for the whole entire thing. And when you look at the scope of it, hey, let's hear it for John John, huh? That's a lot of cutting. Because these two by fours, a very rare exception, uh, the eight foot size that they come in, you still have to make adjustments to the size. So now we're in the bolting together the different parts of the ramp and uh, these are, um, I think they're called half inch bolts, but basically you use a five eighth inch um, the drill bit and we're actually, um, I told you earlier our marine wood is kind of weak so we're using additional two by four. And they don't tell you how hardcore this is in all the other videos, but you gotta drill through this. Okay, let her rip. about probably about 25 volts on it. We have an extended deck. So we got the ramp bolted together now. And John John there is just doing some sanding to make sure that the transitions are smooth because some of our wood was warped. platform is nice and flat John John here uh, this is kind of small potatoes for him he he, uh, he helped to build the house adjacent over here so he's uh, he's cut his teeth on some pretty big projects so I'm really happy to have him on board ah the best part the coping uh, we actually had to get a stainless stainless steel because um, you know the the regular uh, galvanized pipe is not available here and standard uh, standard metals rust like within months they turn brown now stainless steel is believe it or not it's a little softer than the galvanized steel 
So it might start denting when we skate, but um, <clears throat> it's actually really affordable. So we're gonna go for it. I figure I can always replace it with something later on. Um, I think we are gonna have to cut it because our ramp is, I think, about a half inch short. a little stress test on a section of uh, stainless steel uh, so if you're hitting the coping it's actually not holding up very well because if I take this off you can see it's already starting to bend so So what I discovered from the stress test is the diameter obviously was compromised but there was no real dents from the hammer, you know, like, so if you're hitting it with your trucks, it's going to bend the pipe a little bit, but it's not going to make, you know, short one inch dents. And so what I decided to do is, um, we have a lot of bamboo growing on our property. So I'm going to measure the diameter of this and see if we can requisition some bamboo that's that's close to that and put it on the inside. Now here's this section of bamboo fence. Now bamboo is, is really strong and uh, it lasts a long time too. So even if, even if you're hitting the, the center section, which is more easily compromised, about every foot you've got these natural braces which go all the way through and they're super soft. That's the thing, sometimes you you stand to take a pee somewhere and you stand on a nest like this. Oh boy, you'll be doing the boogie woogie dance real fast. These buggers, they'll bite you in a freaking second. And even this cow here, John John told me, don't stand too close or you're gonna get bucked. Don't stand so close to me. Oh, you're giving me the evil eye. Giving me the stink eye. All right, let's get this show on the road. Hey, that's an easy 12 feet. That's piece number one. And it's pretty straight throughout. John John said it's not original bamboo. So it's like a... It's like a, a breed from a later generation. And so what that means is, even though the, uh, the braces are, are strong. Hey, you see that? So that's not gonna work. But this will. So we're just gonna get this wood and sand off the corners and stick it in the pipe. We were thinking about filling it with cement which would be great, but it's super heavy. And what happens if the kids are skateboarding and it rolls off and they freaking get steamrolled. So this will be perfect. So we've got 
put the wood inside the coping and we've left about six inches on either side because we're not really going to be hitting that and also um, some of the other builders will be affixing the coping by drilling holes from the top and other people actually drilled up from the back which is preferable right because we don't want to put holes on the front because this is stainless and it's going to get sharp and every time you grab it you, you probably risk getting cut pretty bad so we have to go through the back so what we decided to do is we're going to take these half inch bolts and we're going to we left a little space inside because we're going to bolt one on each side coming through like this coming through the back and we should be able to screw it on on the inside and then once both sides are secure we'll take um, screws two and a half inch screws and see if we can drill in from the back <laughs> all right we've got a connection how about that and there's our bolt just got to tighten it all right so we got two half inch bolts on each side it's totally solid and we're just going to retrofit some of the first uh two by fours to make it even stronger off the back especially when we put the deck on this thing's not going anywhere so this is really a breakthrough in uh, ramp design. I mean, maybe people have done it before, but no screws are going to be needed at all on this thing because those bolts are so strong. And this pipe is, uh, once you get those holes in there, you saw how hard it was to drill those holes. It's not going to crack or anything like that. So it's, it's kind of complicated. You have to be exact on the holes, but once you get it, Way to go. Yeah, so you gotta use a chainsaw to build the upper deck. No, I'm just kidding. That's Jojo, he's doing a little uh, landscaping. We got this mango tree, it's going to grow right up to the roof, so we had to take a branch off. So we have our nice big deck up here on both sides of the ramp. Uh, on this side, this is 7 feet wide and 12 feet long. And so the next step is we've got four of these balusters here. We're going to affix to each corner and then get some nice sturdy railing all around with some two by fours coming up vertically bolted into the ramp so that it's really secure. Because a deck of this size could easily hold a dozen people. And, uh, you know, if, if some of them are heavy set, you're talking one ton worth of weight here. We just want to make sure the railing's nice and secure.
the stern deck is completed. Come on, let's take a look. So because the deck is so large, we actually built a custom stairwell in case we have a lot of people, you know, especially if you have elderly people or, or heavy set people or even little children like toddlers so they don't have to scramble up and down, especially if people are skating. Uh, we have balustraded uh, stairwell here and then we, uh, we put the railing up and we also have this, um, this warning here, because you know, if you have a party, especially if people have one too many strain kind of close to the edge. So this way, if, they, if they're stepping over here, if they have any wits about them, they'll notice some yellow and hopefully they'll stop before they fall off the edge. So again, we are trying to make it look like a pirate ship. So again, this would be the stern. There's a reason why we're gonna do the plywood last. It's because as soon as you put the plywood on, everybody's gonna to wanna to play on it, right? Especially if you have skaters around. Even if it's not completed, it's just too tempting, you know? People are gonna to wanna to ride it. And so by, by doing the transitions last, you know, you can squarely say this is still a construction site. You know, no playing, no skating, whatever. So the railing is double bolted with half inch bolts. You can see here, and uh, it's bolted from the outside. So any pressure you have on this is pushing out. And we have this, this skirt here so you can have chairs that won't you know, slip over the edge. We just want to be able to have a lot of people here and not have to worry about this thing collapsing or people falling off. Um, so we've got, I think like 10 or 12 uprights, all with the double bolt. And uh, the double bolts also go all the way through. Now, the other thing about it is, is this is the white side of eight feet. These uprights do provide additional, of course, uh, load bearing support for the deck. So it's kind of a win-win putting the additional railing. Again, this mini ramp is entirely handcrafted. That means we don't, the only thing we have that's electric besides our radio is our drills. So all the wood is being sawed and painted by hand. Uh, here's, here's John John here. So there's really just two of us that have built it thus far. Of course, we still have to make the bow or the front deck. And we're gonna, well, I'll show you when it's done. It'll be a little different. We're gonna have some kind of special seating areas and make it look a little bit like the front of a ship. And also there's a few other special features we added to the ramp, surprises that I'll show you when we're done. So John John is hollowing out a figurehead and we're going to put it on this and uh, I wanted to show you something cool about how we're making the railing is the coping is totally flush so you can't you can't get cut on it at all again we're using stainless steel so when you cut it the edges are pretty sharp but we've got it nicely designed so it's totally flush with the whole ramp now up here we have we built a box so the kids when they go on the slide they don't fall out they can come over here grab the top sit down and here we go. Whee! Whoa. Okay. Now we're using a combination of three inch screws and we're using a lot of inch and a half bolts here. 
because they're super secure and we're getting a deal on them. So this whole ramp has like probably 50 bolts. You see a lot of them. Just this freestanding two by four with a bolt is super secure. You're not gonna get that kind of security with screws and nails. I mean, you will, but over time, this is gonna be the strongest. You know, we're planning on having a lot of people using this and where we don't have to worry about any thing falling apart. In this climate here, it's really hard on wood and we also get termites. So yeah, we got a super solid ramp here. We'll finish up the bow and show you how it looks. Eight embellishments to the bowsprit, the bowsprit, leading up to the figurehead. So we're painting that now. And by the way, I do more than painting and filming. You might get the impression from this video that it's a sweatshop and John John is the victim. Actually, he's awesome. He does an incredible job, an incredible volume of work, but I am helping him. I help to cut the wood. I help to put the bolts in. So, and he's getting compensated pretty well. But uh, he's a definite expert uh, carpenter. And so I'm really happy to have him on board. And uh, we're going to get this figurehead of Juan de Salcedo propped up. Juan de Salcedo was a Spanish explorer who came up to Ilocos Norte in the, you know, early 1500s or late 1400s. And he didn't discover it. Because like all the Spanish explorers, they actually, most of the places they went, there were already natives there. But he was the first European explorer to settle it. And, you know, try to instill the Spanish style encomienda Christianization. The religious part succeeded. The Philippines is 90% Roman Catholic. But the, uh, the enculturization part pretty much failed. The Ilocanos still speak their own language. They don't speak Spanish here. And most of the indigenous ways continue. However, the Spanish did have a, an influence. And uh, there were pirates up here too. And there he is, Juan de Soseldo, the missionary. Of course, we are in the business of impalement. So we got the figurehead nicely uh, set vertically on a two by four uh, with wood glue after we hollowed it out. And we had to set it up first on the two by four because it just barely fits. And of course, on a ship, it would be facing outward, right? But what fun is that? We want to see the face. So we turn it in and uh, he'll be watching us all the time. So we better skate good or we'll be keel hauled. So we put up the bow section in front, uh, but as you can see, it's, it doesn't really look like a bow because I messed up on the shape. And also we want to open the area up more for more light, a little more air. So you can see the cut we're making right over here. We're gonna reshape it a little bit. We've come this far, we don't want to do a half-assed job, so we're gonna sharpen up the front. Well, that took a little longer than expected, but we finally finished the front end of the ramp, the bow. So, uh, 
Come on, I'll show you some of the features. Some of the important things are now it's it's more like cut like a bow of a ship and we still have we still have these uprights. We have to have these for, you know, for safety so nobody falls off the side. But this is Juan de Salcedo. He was a Spanish missionary who came to the northern Philippines uh, like 400 years ago. And uh, that's why there's crosses here because they came on big uh, Spanish galleons. And it is kind of a pirate ship. And later on I can show you some features about it. Because the Spanish period here was not a good one for the local people. They pretty much had like slave labor and stuff. But uh, the Christian, the, 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 the Catholic element stuck and to this day is thriving. And one day Salcedo, was, he was a missionary. He was not, uh, I, I do not believe he was a conquistador, but he may have been a conquistador slash missionary a lot of them were but anyway um, we kept we kept some of the side panels open to get more airflow and to get more light so that would be the the other main feature and uh, also again these all have these all have bolts so that you have some heavy people leaning against this they're not gonna fall down okay so now Finally, it's time to put three layers of plywood. We're gonna start with, uh, with black. Because when you're in the fort, it'll be darker. So we got the first pieces of ply on. We really had to bend it. We put on way more screws than usual. You're supposed to have, it's good to have eight across, each um, two by four. And we probably have double that because we needed so many to bend it down, because the only ply available here is, is this, um, it's, it's more than the recommended amount, the thickness. So we didn't get the obligatory video of like three guys like pushing it down, because everybody was working to do it. But now we have this issue where the overhang is, uh, if you put a ply here on the transition, it's gonna be flat down here. We need it to go up like this. So John John came up with an idea to secure, secure some bulwarks here uh, that when we put the other piece on, we can put it flush like that. Jojo, the extreme gardener, is back to support. All right, we got Jojo on location. The safety cones. Hey, Jojo, where's your chainsaw? Texas. Texas. There it is, the obligatory video of three dudes standing on the transition, pushing it down, trying to get the right fit. So I wanted to give an update on screwing down the ply because I've given a few different figures. Um, it's not eight screws across 12 feet wide. That would be one every foot and a half. That might be okay on your middle section since we're doing three la layers of ply. But for this bottom one, and I think for most of them, the recommended distance is eight inches between screws. And you can just kind of sight it as you go along. Uh, and we, we pretty much got it. This one's eight inches. This one's six. This one's about nine. But anyway, you want to try to get eight inches across on each two by four framing, at least for the first layer of plywood because it's a thicker wood 
it really has to stick there and bend there and then um, again the middle one you don't need as many and you probably don't want as many on the top one either because you're going to be skating you know and more screws is more preparations on the surface so to put the ply down we're using these uh, stainless steel uh, flathead inch and a half screws and we've used 1200 just to put the first ply down we did use some to build the ramp not a lot but we did use some this is all we have left now the first plot the first level we used more than necessary but anyway we have a whole nother box uh, we have 1100 more and that should be more than enough to finish so if you're wondering how many inch and a half screws you need I would say get 2000 if you're really gonna get this thing you know tightly uh, put down three levels so to start the second layer you're gonna want to cut your plywood lengthwise and so this is gonna be on top like so and so the next piece will be a full piece so that you're staggering the cracks to make a stronger ramp with less, um, you know, you don't want to have one plywood exactly over the next one and have a double length crack. That's why you're going to rip it in half and stagger your, your lengths and widths. Another helper, a Romnick here. Hey Romnick. Trying to get a good fit. So what's wrong with this picture? Actually nothing's wrong. We have a perfect transition. Now you remember last time on our second layer we had a small piece here. And now it's big. The reason is this is a totally new ply. This is the third layer. And we decided to go with four layers. The reason is, is our second layer is really paper thin. It's not very much. And uh, the final layer, we're gonna really fine tune and do some improvements. You saw John John over here, he was doing some sanding to even out the surface. And also, if you wanna, come here, I'll show you. If you wanna take a look at this, these are what we call shims. And we have some in a few different thicknesses. Now, if you come over here and look at the coping, some parts of the coping, because one of our uh, two by fours is warped on this section. So the coping is sticking out really too much. You don't want to hit the coping so abruptly if you're coming straight on for an error that it actually makes you pop back, right? So what we can do is apply a call to shim underneath the final layer or any layer where there's a problem with the coping. So here's a shim we put over on this side so you have a more nice grind spot without a super radical bump. So there's how it looks with the plywood over the shim. 
We cut uh, eight foot long in half again because we're staggering the width in order to cover the cracks from the previous layer. But this is, this is really ideal here. If you're coming up and you're hitting it, you can get a grind, but it's not too abrupt. One important thing to check for with your screws is actually going to be on the back. If you have kids or if you want to do storage or if you're ever going to come in back, you have to look and make sure that the screws hit your 2x4s. Also, it's not going to be as strong if they don't. So you can see here, I'll turn this around. You see here we have three misses. So John, John, why don't you pull those out? And you have to just take them out and do it over. So we're done with the fourth and final ply and it is looking and feeling great. Uh, a few things I think I should point out is people might say, oh, four plies, that's ridiculous. Well, let me tell you, there's a huge improvement between the third ply and this last one. The third ply still was uneven and it, when you stepped on it in places, it shook a little bit and you can hear noises. When you step on this ramp, it's uniformly solid throughout. And uh, we made improvements with the coping. And, you know, when you look at the, the cross section, it's a literal sandwich. Now this piece right here is a giant shim because our transition was lagging right here, probably because we, we, we had two uh, connective points there that were not directly over a two by four. And so what we did in all those situations was put a big shim and it really improved upon not only the strength, but the transition. So there's one final step before we paint it we're going to take a sander and go over it. Uh, we're going to make the edges more uniform. And if there's any place that we can improve upon by make it smoother, we'll do that. We're going to double check for screws, make sure none are sticking up. And also we're going to take silicon a few places like this that have a gap we're going to fill in. Now, some people say you should intentionally leave a few millimeters between each ply before you lay it on the final layer and then silicon inside the gap because if you're in a place that has dramatic weather changes seasonally, the wood will uh, change size, you know, it will expand and shrink. Where we live, that's exactly the case. The wood will do that. However, from building this ramp, the uh, efficiency of the sander gives us enough confidence that even if this wood starts to warp on the seams, we figure we can just sand it out. So we're not gonna do that except where we need to on the big gaps. The wood has been sanded and silicon has been applied to the cracks. 
So we're ready to start painting. By the way, if you're wondering again, why did we paint three layers of wood only to cover it? I stated at the beginning of the video, and it was a long time ago, so I'll remind you, we live in a place where if you don't uh, pest proof and weather proof your wood, even in a shaded area outdoors, within a year, termites and bugs in the weather will basically eat your wood and destroy it. So we put uh, polyurethane paint on the other layers as well as termite proof uh, a, a mixture and also we have this uh, pirate fort and so we wanted to have the inside of it with ribs like a like a rib ceiling of a ship if you can imagine a uh, the inside of a ship we wanted to have the colors pop out on that it turned out to be smart that we put extra paint on the plies because this this wrap is almost like it almost has like a bounce to it. It's firm, but the rubberized paint creates an additional uh, shock absorber. So it's a really nice feeling surface. Uh, paint was this tile red um, a polyurethane paint and the problem with that is, is it really slides especially if you're sweaty or it gets moist at all in fact there's a skate park in England that had to close it down because they decided to weatherproof the whole park with a polyurethane paint which really looks awesome and it's a great coating it's like for driveways and stuff like that the problem is skateboarders were sliding out and cracking their head and breaking their arm. They had to close the whole skate park down. So this, this is a flat, flat latex paint. And it's really great because it's got some grip to it. So you don't need to buy, you know, the high-end $99, $99 a gallon, the specifically skateboard manufactured ramp paints. I mean, go ahead and spend the money if you want, but it's not necessary. Uh, all you have to do is get this flat, get like a flat latex paint. Now, when you go to the paint store, you can get a physical swath of dried paint. So you can actually, if you wanna feel the texture, First of all, don't get gloss, get flat and feel it, and it should have a little bit of a grip. The flat paint, you shouldn't be able to slide across it. It should kind of stop your finger a little bit. So that's the way to weatherproof and weather coat your paint on, on a discount. Now, we're gonna use this to our advantage because it is a really nice blue. So we're simply gonna take some masking tape and uh, put a few lines over it 
and then repaint it with a darker color so when we take the tape off it'll have kind of like a tiles effect like for a swimming pool it looks cool it looks like a full pirate ship and uh, I hurt my ankle building it so in a couple days when I get better I will drop in to this awesome pirate ship ramp so here we are I'll show you the pirate fort add-on one of the special features one of the reason it took so long to build got this nice trim there's the upper deck nice chill area there here's the here's inside the fort you've got nice lights we have a fan light installed here the painting what's this the painting has a secret door that leads to the brig. This is where the yellow ribs from the 2x4s really come out. We actually have some pictures on the wall. We're going to get some little couches and stuff for the kids. Put some furniture in there. This is actually a padded rubber flooring. It's a pretty big space in there. Uh, it's about, well, it's definitely eight feet wide by about a total of eight or ten feet deep. And then continuing on down the back, we have the brig. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. All the music is original. It came from my electronic project, Carp, from my three albums, uh, Open Circuit, Sky World, and La Hanta Cinema. You can check them all out for free, the full albums on Bandcamp. Links are below. Be sure to have a quick party once you're done with your ramp. Have fun, happy skating, and enjoy your pirate ship skate ramp.
So the stern deck is com com wait. So the stern deck is completed. Come on, I'll show you. Come on, I'll show you. <laughs> wait, sorry. That's not good. Hold on. It's a nasty
Let's build a mini ramp. 